should have. All right. There are some attendees. Hey. Welcome, folks. Come on in. We're just getting started. It was great. The water's warm. Yep. Too warm. In my yeah, neck of too warm and awesome. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little spurt of cold water for about 10 seconds in the morning, and then and then it's like a warm swimming pool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You guys are living a different life down there. That is for certain. Yeah, on the on the the flip side though, pretty much everywhere has AC and it's a necessity and not a you know a luxury. That's right. Yep. All right. So I have the QA up here. I'll watch that as we go. And okay. uh, when you're ready Fantastic. to start, so I've that in the chat up. So when people want to start asking questions, we'll uh, we're ready to roll. Okay. We'll give another minute or, or two for folks to roll in. People who have just joined us, uh, feel free to use the chat. There's a chat button down at the bottom. If you'd like to introduce yourself in the chat room, that'd be great. I'll start. Test our screen share too. Yep, I can see your screen. The AV check. Yep, you're not in presentation mode, but yeah, we got you. Well, I kind of am. I, I like to present a browser because I hop around between ah. between windows. So yeah, you'll just have to look at my my edge browser tabs. <laughs> you look like my tabs with about 16 of them open. So. Yeah. Some people get hundreds of tabs and, and it, it, <laughs> I, I'm like, how do you live this way? How do you even know what you're looking at? All right. Well, we have four, 11 people. All right. right. We've got more joining. So I think we're ready to go, Sean. Let's get this show on the road. Welcome, everyone, dialing in and maybe watching the recording in the future. This is the Instruct introductory workshop. So Instruct is a virtual labs platform that allows you to access VMs and containers and Kubernetes clusters, all sorts of cool technical or technologies right through your web browser. So if you haven't tried Instruct yet, uh, you'll get a chance to during the, the, the uh, workshop today. And then each attendee is also going to get access to our training organization where you could try your hand at building some of your own content inside of Instruct. So if anyone's just joined, please feel free to introduce yourself in the chat. You can also drop any questions into either the chat or you can use the Q&A button as well. Uh, we're pretty flexible that way. And uh, a little bit of housekeeping before we dive right in here. Um, this is being recorded. So we are live and being recorded. And also the training organization that we're going to give folks access to, uh, it's a shared organization. So you will be in there with other users. You will be able to see what they create. They'll be able to see what you create. So don't put your company's uh, precious, you know, private information or passwords or software into Instruct because, uh, you know, where you'll be working in the training org, semi semi public, right? Other users can can uh, share the environment. Now, if you need a private trial, talk to us, right? You can reach out to me or TJ. And we can we can help you get your company set up in a private trial if that's something that's required. So let's start with a little introduction to who we are and what we do. Um, Instruct is a Netherlands-based startup. Um, we were created in 2018 at HashiConf, the yearly HashiCorp uh, conference in HashiConf EU. I could show you the, the earliest version of Instruct. So our company was actually born inside of an arcade machine. This is the first version of Instruct that you, you could see here. Our friends at HashiCorp asked the clever engineers at Zebia Labs, hey, could you build something fun for our conference? Something that would help users learn how to use our software, but also be fun and engaging at the same time. So the very first versions of Instruct were very much a gamified experience, as you can see here. 
in the in the video um, there was a keyboard inside of the arcade cabinet so you could actually do terraform and vault things inside of this big giant gaming arcade machine fast forward to the next year and uh, we realized hey people like this way of learning why don't we bring it to the browser so instruct moved out of the arcade cabinet and into the web browser and since then we've grown a lot we have lots of, of users using instruct for things like live workshops self-based training uh, demos test drives customer enablement internal enablement or even just labs just playgrounds where you can kind of test and you know work with different technologies right from your browser but that's a bit of background about instruct the company let's focus a little more you know specifically around this group of people called developers maybe you remember if you're old enough the the famous steve balmer video where he's yelling developers 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 someone even turned it into a techno song it was so popular how do you sell to this guy you, you've seen the show or heard of silicon valley this is um our sysadmin our typical sysadmin guilfoyle from the hbo show silicon valley People like Guilfoyle don't want to talk to sales. It's just a fact, right? Developers and sysadmins and technical people are busy. And they don't have time for your fancy sales pitch. And they just want, you know, to try the tools out, see if they work, right? This is more of a hands-on type of learner. So Instruct is, is perfect for engaging with folks who don't like to be sold to. Instead, what you can do is say, hey, Mr. Guilfoyle or uh, Ms. Developer, here's a track. I'd like you to try this on your own time, no pressure. You can get your hands on our technology and just see how you like it, right? And then call us if you, if you, if you want to talk some. So this approach seems to work a lot better. We found that, that technical users love to play with tools and, and get hands on with things. And so we made it very, very easy to engage with this type of audience, right? So Instruct is hands-on labs. Here's some of the things we can, you, or you can build on our platform. Uh, cloud accounts, we support Azure AWS and Google Cloud, GCP. You can run Linux, you can run Windows, you can run Docker, you can run Kubernetes or anything you want to run inside of Kubernetes. If you have a, like an app you, you want to install that is containerized. Um, we have built-in IDEs for any programming language. So if you need to, to edit some code, teach people how to do a thing inside of an IDE, you could do that. We've got a lot of built-in templates to get you started, or you could create your own. And then Instruct comes with the command line interface and API for the power users. So if you want to build some automation around our platform, you can do that. So this again was our earliest iteration Instruct back in 2018. Since then, we've got a new logo. You'll notice our, our logo has evolved a little bit. Here's our new logo. Uh, our, our mascot is named Iggy. So if you see this little robot anywhere, you can just know that that's Iggy. So that's it for slides. You made it through the slide deck. Let's let's look at Instruct. Let's play with some fun stuff, right? So here's an example track that I built that runs a container, not just any container, but a special container called the Palace Arcade. The Palace Arcade is a um, an old school video game arcade, and this track lets you play classic video games right inside of our platform. Now, while this boots up, I'll give you all the link. We'll drop it into chat and you can try it yourself if you want right now in your web browser. So keep an eye on the chat. I've just pasted a link. If you want to follow along, just click the link and click start and you'll get your very own instance of the Palace Arcade. Takes about 20 seconds to stand up. So that's about the average for our, our, our platform for a container based application. And then you'll see embedded in the left side here, 
there's a, a play now button. You can select your game over here. Say I want to try Donkey Kong and click play now. It is ad supported. So you may see a little box show up here. You can you just kind of close the ad when uh, it's done. And then I think the key uh, mappings are like shift or Z. I don't remember. Anyway, now everyone's going to play Donkey Kong. That'll be the whole workshop, right? Sometimes I, I hesitate to give this track out too early in the training because uh, we just lose everybody, right? It's so much fun to play the games. That, uh... So this is just one example of, of something you could do with Instruct, right? The limits are really your, your own creativity. Um, as you can see, I'm pretty rusty at, at Donkey Kong, but uh, that's yours to play with. So you keep that link. If you ever get bored and you don't wanna try one of these classic games, you've got the Palace Arcade at your fingertips. Now let's look at another example track. This is another one I built called Ubuntu Easter Eggs. All these funny little things hidden in Ubuntu that you may or may not have known about. So again, I'm pasting the link in. Bookmark it if you wanna try it now or try it later. Um, I won't start this track, but just to walk you through some of the steps, uh, you could do the cool matrix screensaver. There's some fun games in here. Just some cool little Easter eggs that you know, you can install on an Ubuntu VM. You can even make memes. So this track actually teaches you how to interact with an API. It just happens to be the image flip API that is all about memes. So I shared that link as well. Um, these are kind of some fun, silly examples that I created just to, you know, give people something to play with. But Instruct can be used for very serious topics too, like training people how to run your software, right, in a browser-based environment. So let me jump into the, the demo. This is the GUI, if you haven't seen it. Instruct provides instructions on the right. So if you look on the right, this is what we call the sidebar. This is where you tell a story. This is where you tell your users what commands to run or what you want them to look at. And um, it's all markdown based. So it's really easy to write content for these, uh, these labs. And on the left, we have the different things that we want the user to interact with. That could be a website, like what you see here, right? I've embedded our own website inside of an Instruct track. We also support a couple of different types of code editors. And here's one example of a code editor. And then we have the humble terminal where you can run any kind of Linux command. Um, this is useful for teaching people things that need to be run from a command line interface without having to teach them how to install Linux, right? Maybe they don't have a Linux VM handy. We can give you one. It takes about 20 seconds and you're ready to go, right? You've got your command prompt and you can start running your commands and doing things. Now let's look at a practical challenge. This challenge is meant to teach us how to use the Ghost blog platform. Now, if you haven't heard of Ghost, um, it's a bit like WordPress. So it's, it's a blog platform that you can run. It runs on Node.js. Now, most people might not know how to use Node.js, but you know they, they wanna blog, right? They wanna try it out. So how do I give my users access to a, a ghost environment without, without it being too hard, right? Too complicated to set up. Instruct has done all the hard work for you. So we didn't need to download ghost. We didn't need to figure out how to set up node. We just click start and here's this blog platform and the admin panel is sitting here waiting. It's ready for us to, to set it up. Now what happens if I try to go ahead Click check. Instruct is checking to see if I did the, the correct you know, steps to finish this challenge and I haven't done them yet. So I get a handy little message that says, hey, you haven't run the setup wizard yet. You should go run the setup wizard. Okay, so let's follow the screenshot and we'll complete this task. 
I'm setting up the admin account for this ghost blog. All right. Now my awesome blog should be ready. It's even called my awesome blog. Now, if I come back down here in the corner and I click check again, hey, well done. We did the correct thing. So this is a, a sort of gamification based platform where you give your users small challenges, teach them how to do a step and then gradually bring them towards some, some sort of goal, right? Maybe that's getting your software installed or you know, running your software or it could be any sort of um, technical task. This challenge shows off a more power user interface. So this is Visual Studio Code running in a browser. Many of you probably use Visual Studio Code. It's a very popular um, programmer's text editor. And it's got features like autocomplete. So if I just start typing here, you can see I get these handy little, you know, pull down menus. I want to import the anti-gravity module. So this supports pretty much any programming language. You can see here I'm using Python, but all the languages that you could possibly you know, want to use. And if, if you don't find what you need here, you can actually install extensions too. So this is a really great way to give your user a full-blown IDE with some pre-configured code and they could just start working right away, right? Very little friction to getting started with um, technical training. There's even a terminal. So you can run a terminal right inside of the, the browser, run commands without ever leaving the editor. Now, Kubernetes is very popular nowadays. The problem is Kubernetes is hard. If you, if you haven't, try installing it from scratch. There's a whole tutorial out there called Kubernetes the hard way. And doing it from scratch is the hard way. Well, at Instruct, we want to give you Kubernetes the easy way. No one wants to install Kubernetes, right? Maybe some people do, but um, most of us just want to use it, right? So Instruct gives you pre-configured templates where you could jump right in and start running the kubectl commands or installing applications. Let's install an app and I'll show you how easy it could be. I'm using the helm command which is a, a Kubernetes packaging system to install the juice shop. Now, if you haven't heard of juice shop, it is the example website for uh, terrible insecure web design. So why would you want a terrible insecure website? Well, it's good for testing your security tools, right? If you happen to have a tool that scans for vulnerabilities and exploits, it's kind of nice to have a sample app to work with. So that's where, where Juice Shop comes in handy. Uh, security folks like it for that reason. We can see our app is now running. I simply copy the command into the terminal. And there we go. So easy, even a salesperson can do it. And our salespeople do. They run these demos on their own and can actually deploy an app into Kubernetes without too much trouble. As you saw right here, it's just three lines of code, right, to get this app up and running. If you have a Helm chart or a Docker file or your own container, you could do this too, right? You can run your own app right inside of Instruct and give people access to it. Now, one more thing that we can do is create cloud accounts. Now, I, I will add a, a caveat to that. The cloud accounts are not enabled in the training organization that we're going to give you folks access to. It's not that we don't like you, but cloud accounts are just big, juicy targets for abuse. So if you need a cloud account, talk to me, right? You can email us later, and we could talk about a formal trial. But just know that Instruct can support temporary ephemeral AWS accounts, GCP projects, and Azure subscriptions. If you have 
an app that needs to run in AWS or connect to AWS, we can basically rent you a cloud account for an hour. And then when that hour is up, we delete it. So nice from a cleanup point of view. Never again will you have to worry about the shared cloud account, which ends up looking like a communal kitchen, right? Just a mess of stuff. People leave things running. With Instruct, all that pain goes away uh, because we give you these temporary accounts that each student gets one, they use it for a little while, and then we delete it. Here's another interesting use case for Instruct. Coming back to our, our original uh, slide deck, right? Sales. You can give away free test drives. People love free. And hey, I want to try this thing for free. I don't even have to talk to a sales rep. Sounds great, right? Sign me up. So I put my name in. And then immediately, I get a link that gives me some sample content. So the friction is, is almost zero, right? You could get your users hands-on with your product before they even talk to a sales rep or a, an SDR. Um, this is one other area or way you could use Instruct, these short little test drive tracks. Just a taste of your software, right? It's meant to open the door and get people interested. So that was uh, the product demo. There's just one more challenge here, which I think we can go through real quick. Um, there was a question that came up during that, while well, that's starting here. Um, yeah. Was can the VS Code extensions be pre-installed so the user doesn't have to do that themselves? Yeah. So yeah, they can be. Yeah. So we support two ways of installing. Um, one is using a, a command line and hitting the marketplace. And if your extension isn't in the marketplace, we can install it manually if you have the v6 file. So yeah, and good question. Done, and that's done during the setup of the actual instance. Is yeah. That correct? Yeah, and if you want even a speedier experience, you can bake the extensions in um, and bring your own image. So I forgot to mention this, but Instruct supports custom images. If you have a VM disk image or a container image, like a Docker image, you can, you can bring your own image to our platform and, and run it inside of Instruct. So that's the end of the demo track. I'll share this link too, in case you'd like to play with any of this stuff. Um, so that was the intro and the demo. Now let's look at the back end and, and see what it feels like to create content inside of Instruct. And I'm also going to set up everyone with a, um, a trial account inside of our training org here. So Which folks, as you do this, the, yeah. you're, it's the perfect time as you keep, you, I know you're where you're going next. Um, the question was, are those Linux environments? And it doesn't have to be just Linux, it could be Windows, right? Um, those environments running in Docker containers and cloud servers, provider servers. So I think you're going to walk through that now. I just want to let you know somebody did ask that question. Yeah, thank you. That is a great question. And um, we'll show you the answer to it interactively. The short answer is yes. Right. Uh, they are Docker containers and, and VMs. So we can run either or both inside your sandbox. Um, Let's get everybody registered. So if you're, you're uh, in the chat, please, um, you can DM if you don't want to share it publicly or if you don't care, just give us your email address and TJ and I will add you into the team here, right? I'll, so you... I'll, I'll add them in, Sean. Okay. So go ahead and keep going. And as I come in, I will grab okay. them. Okay, thank you, TJ. Of course. Yeah, TJ has got that part. Um, when you get the invite, you'll, you'll get a link in your email. Um, check your spam folder if you don't get the email right away. And if, if somehow your email filter is eating the welcome email, uh, we can pivot and use a personal account instead, right? Sometimes, sometimes corporate emails, you know what I mean. The spam filter gets a little over aggressive. Um, so this is the back end. This is where the content creators and instruct administrators will live. Um, you each will get content creator rights, which means you could create tracks like the ones you see here. 
what you won't be able to do is access all the super admin controls, right? So you won't be able to add other users or mess with other people's content, but uh, you do have flexibility inside here to create your own tracks. So let me walk you through that process first. This is a great way to get started with Instruct. You click this big friendly create track button. Now there are a couple of ways to get started. You could start from scratch, which gives you a very empty bare bones track. It doesn't really do anything, but it's a, you know, it's, it's, it's a minimum viable track. Or you could create from a pre-existing template. We do have seven or eight templates that have got a few uh, different use cases predefined. So just choose one that looks interesting to you. Um, the AWS cloud account won't really get very far though, because I don't think we have that enabled inside this org. Everything else is fair game. But let's do container. Containers are nice and fast and they're fun to play with. I'm clicking select. Now I can give this track a title. Let's pick something more interesting than sandbox container. Let's call it Sean's Beach Party. And then the track slug, it's really up to you uh, what you want to call this. It, it just has to be lowercase, no spaces in the slug. So you could do something similar to the title if you like, just like this. You won't have to select a team here. Um, I can see all of the teams because I have super admin, but everyone here on the workshop uh, webinar should be plopped into instruct training, right? This is the shared org that we use. And it could be as simple as that. You've created your first track. You can click start right away. So all of our templates are, are fully functional. They're very basic, but they do work right out of the box. Click start, figure out what's in my beach party. Now what's happening now is the infrastructure to support your track is spinning up. This track is pretty small. It only has one container. So it shouldn't take more than about 20 seconds to spin up. It's pretty quick. While we wait for this track um, to spin up, you can always click the back button too if you wanna go back to the main page of your track. I could show you some more of the editor features. This link here, I'll go ahead and circle it so we can kind of call it out. But um, you see the settings here on the, on the right side? Configure sandbox. That's where we go if we want to change the container or add a container, maybe put a VM into the track. But let's look at what's in the sandbox now. Two sections, uh, there's the containers up top, VMs at the bottom. So far, we have only one container, which is fine. That's all we need at this point. The image uh, can be chosen, right? We're just using a, a very default Ubuntu container. So that just gets us a, a, a plain vanilla Ubuntu machine. And then you can override any of these. If you have custom entry points or, you know, this stuff will make sense if you've used Docker before. If not, don't worry about it, right? You could just leave these blank and the track will still work. You can configure some environment variables if you need to. Let's say I need a little more memory, right? Maybe I'm running something that's memory intensive. So I'm gonna double the memory to 512. So that's updated. The next person who spins up my track will get a slightly larger container, right? Because I, I uh, increased the memory. The track should be started up by now. Let's click continue. We'll hop back into the track environment. Start. Hey, cool. I've got a, a, a task. It wants me to make a directory called instruct. So I click on the copy button and paste my command in and click check. Yeah, we did it. Feels so good to accomplish a thing. All right, so that wasn't that exciting, but it's a starting point, right? This is meant to help you 
put your own container, right? Or customize this in a way that uh, adds something new to it. So we'll go through that in a moment. I just wanted to show you the very quick, quick start first. So you can see how easy it is to, to stand up from a template. So what we're gonna do next um, is interactively walk through the command line, okay? Now command line, if you're not used to command line, it can be a little scary. It's this black box where the super nerds type commands and you know run things. But don't worry, if you're not a super nerd or a, a developer or someone who lives in the command line, I, I still want you to install the CLI because there are some parts of our, our technology, our platform that you can only get to with the CLI. So you wanna have it handy just in case you need it, right? The good news is CLI is really easy to install. We even have videos. If you, if you prefer a video, you can watch a video for installation. I think it's probably worth it to um, link the video. Well, let's do that right now. I'll put these into the chat so that uh, you can have them for later reference, right? Now the trick is to find them. I think we have a playlist. Tutorials, how ah, about that? There's a whole tutorials playlist. So these are created and narrated by our wonderful uh, video producer, Brittany. If you like to learn for just watching videos, uh, we've got a whole bunch, including how to install the CLI, right? So I'll just leave that link for you. We're gonna walk through it now, just step by step, so you can kind of see the process. Um, that brings me to our docs. Our docs are pretty good. I'm gonna brag on our docs. Um, they weren't always good, but we hired an amazing technical writer and now everything you need, you can find in the docs. And if you don't find it, let me know, we'll add it to the docs. You can get started really easily up here in the upper left corner of the docs page. Uh, kind of look, look at the getting started section. This is where you should start. So if you're brand new to Instruct, just click on one of those links and um, you, we'll, we'll get you going right. So set up Instruct, set up your chosen tool. If you'd like to follow along and uh, if you have the rights to install software on your laptop uh, and you're not locked down, try picking one of these three options here, right? We have Linux, Mac, and Windows. All three are supported. Our command line tool is, is written in Golang, so it's multi-platform. And really it's simple. All you do is copy this code, and paste it into a terminal. We have tested it on each platform. Uh, it usually works. So just take this, open a terminal or a command prompt, paste it in there, and then you're done. That's it. Easy install. Then you can start running this little instruct command. So that's uh, definitely highly recommended, right? You could still use the UI, but I want everyone to install the command line tool. It will help you later. In fact, I'm such a big fan of the CLI. I created a whole track just to teach you how to use the CLI. I love it that much. Um, so what we'll do next is walk through this track interactively. If you like, you can follow along with me. I'm gonna paste the track into the, there we go. And um, you don't need your, training account to do this track either, right? This is this one is open as long as you use the link in the chat. Uh, follow along now or bookmark it for later. Either one's fine. You don't have to do it today. Uh, you can access this later if you need to. This normally takes 45 minutes for a brand new user. Uh, I'm gonna go and do it in kind of speed run mode so we get through the whole thing. And um, that way you could come back, watch a recording later, try it on your own time. But if, if you could keep up, right, and you wanna run through it with me, that's fine too. 
And this one takes a little bit longer to start up. I think it has a VM in it. So the VM boot times tend to be around a minute. We found containers take around 20 seconds. Um, so that time can be um, filled with video. I didn't mention this earlier, but you can see we, we've got some messages here. You can also place a video right in this space. So it gives your user something interesting to watch while they wait for the sandbox to boot. Additionally, we have a feature called Hot Start, where if you, you choose to, you can have a bunch of sandboxes preheated, right? We can have this track, like my demo track here. We have several of these ready to go, click start, click launch, on demand, right? The startup time is basically zero because we have that in the hot start configuration. Okay, we're ready, let's jump in. The first challenge is really simple. It's just to teach you how to use a terminal, right? So you can run commands in the terminal. You can edit the text. Hello world, I'm screaming, it's all caps. Just a real simple, uh, here's how to instruct. And then we get to installing the command line tool. Now I'm doing this inside of a track, but you'll eventually want to do this on your own laptop. And these are just the same commands that I showed you from the docs. So we download the zip file, we unzip the zip file, and we move it somewhere we can run it. That's it. Not too bad, right? It's pretty easy to install. Okay, next challenge. So the first thing you wanna do after you install the command line tool is do an instruct auth login. On your laptop, when you run this, it'll pop a browser window open. I'm simulating that normally I'm clicking on this link, but you'll get a link that looks like this. Click sign in with email. I think I could sign in with email. Yep. You could close the browser window now. And then if you have more than one org like I do, you might have to choose one. Most of you will have only one org, so that step is a lot easier. And that's it, we are logged in. So now we can actually start to build things using the command line tool. Instruct-h will show you all the help. So these are all the things you can do with the command line. You can look at your own config settings. Make sure you're in the training org. Check our version. Let's type it. Start version. Okay, so I've got an older version of the CLI. Uh, the good news is it's pretty easy to update. On most systems, it can update itself in place. You may have to run sudo instruct update, which is fine. I don't on my machine because I'm already root, but just keep that in mind. All right, so we've authenticated, we've updated our command line tool. Let's create a track. So before I create a track, I'm gonna set a variable with my name. The reason we do this is so that everybody doesn't have the same track name. So you could put anything in here, just, just choose some string, right? And, and export my name equals something. Now I have this variable I can use. And we're gonna do an instruct track create. Try to make the text a little bigger for everybody. There we go. Instruct track create dash dash title. And then you see my name is going to get replaced with my name. Okay. 
now we can set our working directory. The good news is all the rest of the commands, you can simply copy and paste. I don't have to, to change anything here. Just run these commands. Then we want to look at our config.yaml. So this is basically the source code, very similar to the track we created in the UI, but now you're seeing the code that builds the track. Our next stop is the track.yaml. This is where you configure the metadata. You can change the description of the track, the teaser. So I'll change the title. There's the track. Super awesome. You can even put emoji in here if you want to. Now, private is set to false. Let's change that to true. And we'll change publish to true. And then click save. I'll click the little disk icon. OK. So we're done. Let's click check. Move on to the next challenge. Now we need to make sure we're in our track directory. As you can see, I am in my track directory. So that's good. And we're going to run the create challenge create command. Instruct challenge create. The title is simply create a file. Now you'll notice that a new directory appeared called create a file with a zero one in front of it. This is where all the challenge config lives. What we wanna do next is edit the assignment.md. So this is meant to be marked down, but there is a little bit of YAML uh, config at the top. The YAML lives between these triple triple dashes here. So if you look and see everything between the two triple dashes, that is um, configuration stuff where you configure the look and feel of the challenge. Everything below is going to be markdown. So what I want to do is paste some markdown right here. Give you a better look at it. This is just a welcome to our user. And then the triple backticks means this is code, right? So we're saying this bit should be some code that the user can run. If you've never used Markdown before, you could look at the Markdown cheat sheet. This is really handy. Most modern uh, editors do support Markdown. You can learn it in like five minutes, super simple. So bold text, italicized text, lists, all that stuff supported. All right, this challenge is ready. Now I wanna create a check script to make sure my user actually did the step correctly. This is just a really simple little bash script. I'm gonna copy it, put it into the check shell file just overwrite what's in here. This is the script that ran when I click the green check button. And basically it's looking inside of my file to make sure I put the correct text into the file. You can test all sorts of things. We have lots of examples again in our docs. I just search for check. Here's the exact example that we're using, right? Check to see if a file contains certain text. So I put a link into the chat for different types of tests that you can run. Feel free to use these in your own tracks. All righty, click check. Hey, looks good. Let's keep moving on. You may want to test your work. You can run instruct track validate, but make sure we don't have any typos or anything like that. Looks good. So we click next. 
And now comes the moment of truth. We're going to actually push our changes into production with instruct track push. Oh, remote changes. Okay, so this is caused because I have a track existing with the exact same name. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that, right? So we can get a fresh start. We'll filter for me. Ah, there it is, Sean's first track. You could tell I've done this before, right? Okay, so I've deleted that. Delete this one too. Now I can go back and do my push command again. Now, in case you're curious, there also is a pull command. So you can pull changes that you made in the GUI into your local machine, right? Either fresh copy of the track, or if there's some updates, you can pull those down. It will give you the track URL here when it's done pushing. So if I click it, I can try my new track right away. Just like the one we created in the UI. You click start and then you can test it and see if it works. Now here's another uh, pointer for you. You can push some changes immediately. Like if I want to change my sidebar text, I can push my change into this track. Have you noticed me hopping back and forth? Uh, this is the tutorial track, right? This is the track we created. So keep those two separate in your mind. It's a little weird because we're using Instruct to create more Instruct tracks. Normally, you're going to do all this from your laptop, right? So just keep that in mind here. Now let's say I want to change the title from create a file to something different. I just go into my editor. And let's change the title to create the hello.txt file. Save, instruct track push. And almost immediately, um, you should be able to see your changes show up in the track. See that? So I made the edit here inside my um, my source code. Then I went over and I ran instruct track push. And then I can see my change show up instantly. Didn't have to restart the track. Now, if you change the VM and container settings underneath, then yeah, you have to restart the track. But if you're simply editing Markdown, you can iterate pretty quickly, right? You can test your changes live, reload your browser and see them happening. Now let's, let's try our track out. Check. Oh, I didn't do the thing. Okay, so let's make the file and put the hello world into the file. Yay, it works. A very, very simple example, but you can build complex examples with multiple steps and stages and you know all sorts of, of tasks for your users besides simply looking for uh, you know hello world in a file. You might make sure an API responds correctly or that they got a config file in the right place or that a service or application is running. So all of those things are possible within the platform. This is simply meant as a starting point to give you a big push and, and kind of get you going with Instruct. So we've done all of this. Let's go to the next step. Here's where the command line comes in really handy, okay? If there's a problem with your track and you wanna see what went wrong, you need to run Instruct track logs. This is not available in the GUI yet. So what, if for nothing else, just have the command line so you can view log files, right? You'll need it for that. Run instruct track logs, and now I can view in real time the setup, the teardown scripts, the check scripts, 
all the backend stuff that is running in my track. So if we just wait a moment here, we'll start to see the logs stream in from my running session here. Well, this is running, Sean, a question came through. Can you combine the clip creation process with GitHub? So I'm going to um, put a link in for everybody. That was a great question I'll yeah. put in publicly so people can understand how to develop, you know, maintain a developer workflow for all of this, because that is yeah, a, that's you can. a key thing. Yep. Yeah, we do support um, Git, you know, based workflows. And I have some example code running GitHub Actions if you want to um, automate all of this. Uh, the short answer to the question, Hans, is yes, you can combine, and we do recommend it, right? Do do the right thing, put everything into a Git repo. Um, a little word of warning, uh, when you have, start to have multiple users working on tracks, you can overwrite each other's work. So that is one limitation of the UI. If, if I edit this track and TJ comes in and, and makes another edit, he could accidentally overwrite my work, right? So we do strongly recommend that you put your changes into Git once you get everything working, right? You could test your track on your laptop. Um, we don't have implicit version control, but it's pretty easy to rig up. So to answer Matthew's question, out of the box, um, you can basically push to production, right? <laughs> That's how many users get started. They just have a brand new account, a trial account. And in that early stage, it's fine, right? You can build and test because you're the only user. But when you get into, say, uh, the level of a company like HashiCorp, they have dozens or hundreds of users right taking these workshops every week you really really don't want to break the workshop code right before you have to go teach this to 200 people so this is one example that is public um, you can see these pipelines they test all of their content every single night so for the past three years now every night the robots wake up at two in the morning and come in and, and walk through each instruct track start to finish. So this one is pretty rigorous. Um, you can see there's 27 steps in the track and every single step gets tested to make sure that it works so that the HashiCorp engineers and education folks have a simple way to look and see if the light is green, then the content is working. And then they can feel confident that you know, they can teach these workshops and that everything will still be working, right? Hopefully. If it worked eight hours ago, chances are it's still working now. This is a common problem, right? With, with a lot of education content. If you aren't testing it, you know, you don't know, like, when's the last time we spun this thing up, right? It could have broken in the last month and nobody really checked it to find out. So yeah, we're big fans of CICD and test-driven development. Um, so that was a quick tour of Instruct, a very whirlwind tour. I do recommend you dig a little deeper into the docs, um, you know, and if, if reading docs isn't your style, we, we also even have a boot camp. It's a little more interactive. Pull the boot camp up. This is Scott, just, one of the, yeah. and one of the questions that came up just as we're closing here. Um, just why don't we give a high level, I'm searching for the doc link for it as well, but it basically Matt asked, um, I did a track with multiple systems in an environment, I assume check scripts can reach anywhere in the environment to perform checks. Uh, what's the best way to kind of outline the way of thinking of, of the different environments and access to them? Sorry, just had a phone call when it come up. Um, so <laughs> the question was around how, how to divide environments up and provide access to them. Yeah, you have multiple in environments inside of a track. So you have multiple probably like containers or such running. Yep. And then for the check scripts, he wants to check in different environments. So the answer is yes, you can do it. But is there anything you want to highlight and quickly before we run out of time? Yeah, here? let's take a look again at the source code of a track. And um, we'll use that template that we just worked with. So the container template is here. Note that I've got one container, 
That's a pretty simple use case. But let's say I have five containers or I have three containers in a VM and I want to provide different types of access to each machine in the environment. The way you do that is with the assignment.md file, right? So right here, we call them tabs. So these are in the docs. Uh, there are different types of tabs you saw me using during the demo. You can have a shell or a terminal. You can have a UI. So that's some sort of a web app. You can have a code editor. And um, those are kind of the main types of tabs. The fourth one is external website. So between those things, you basically decide what do we want to expose to our end user Maybe you don't need a command line for one challenge, or maybe you do need a command line, and maybe you need a text editor, right? So you can mix and match these things using tabs to create a custom learning environment that just shows the user exactly what they need to accomplish the task. So just to drive that point home, let's go back to our demo real quick. And they sent the link for this, Sean, as well, for the, the docs for networking okay, as well as the great. host host. So, yep. See the tabs up here? These are all controlled with the assignment.md file. Great question. Yeah, that was a good one. So to, uh, got a couple minutes left just to kind of conclude and tie things together here. Um, everyone should have access to the training org now. We had, we had a couple issues. I think they're all ironed out. I was going through. So we have everyone as content creators. And it, Great. Everyone, I think, confirmed they have access, which is good. So, yeah, good. So, that's all here inside of Instruct Training. Um, you can log on and create through the UI. You can also create through the command line. If you get stuck, feel free to email. I might not respond right away, but we'll definitely try to answer every question that comes through. I will drop my email into the chat for you. It's just Sean at instruct.com. And uh, we'd love to see what you build. If you have questions or you know you have a use case that uh, you'd like to try out on Instruct, feel free to reach out. And if, if you feel like um, this could be something your company might wanna use you know, for training or workshops or demos, um, also reach out. We could, we could talk about a full trial, right? Where you get access to all of the enterprise features. So that's kind of it for the webinar. We covered a lot. Uh, be sure to grab the bookmarks from the chat right now. If, like you, you, uh, you could copy and paste or, or bookmark what we posted in the chat. Those will come in handy later when you're uh, developing your own content. All right, thank you, Sean. Great job. And uh, we look forward to hearing from folks. Thanks so much, everyone. We'll chat soon. Good day.